Hi friends, this is Dina and welcome to my new video. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how I painted this very dreamy sunset cloud painting and I really hope you enjoy being here with me. So for this I'm going to be using my uh, Rembrandt watercolor notebook that was gifted to me by Royal Talents and I'm going to be painting it with gouache. If you like some other mediums more you can of course just use whatever you're the most comfortable with but I'm going to be listing all of my use supplies below if you want to check them out. I'm also going to be using some washi tape to tape the edges for my painting because I just like the sharp edges. I will be using these two brushes here, they're both from Princeton and they will be listed down below as all of my supplies and I will also try to add all of my gouache shades in there so you can check out what colors I use but I will also try to have them on the screen when I'm mixing them together to you know add to my paper so you can have a clear picture of what I'm doing. So here's the reference photo that I picked. I am not going to be using this like fully copying this to my paper. I'm mainly just looking at this to kind of find out what colors I can use and what I'm going to be mixing right here. So as you can see I'm just adding some colors to my palette and I'm going to be starting by mixing that kind of purpley blue shade that you can see on the top of this reference photo. So like I said again I'm not going to be copying this. The shapes of the clouds will look very different from what they are in this photo but I just like like to sometimes have a reference photo as a little guide to start my paintings with. I'm going to be using for this first uh, background of the painting this bigger wash brush that I think worked really well and I would highly recommend something similar but you can also go with whatever you have. Then I was mixing together some white, some red and yellow to make this beautiful warm orangey kind of peachy toned bottom to the sky as well because of course that's the area where the sunlight is hitting the most in this beautiful sunset sky. And with that color I of course painted the bottom of this painting and then of course there's a lot of white in between those so I wanted to make a little gradient. I was first just mixing those two like the purple color and the orange color together to kind of um, you know have this like middle shade in between those two colors and then I was just adding some water to my brush and mixing all those colors together a little bit but I did not want to make anything perfect. I definitely struggle with gradients a lot so with this I wanted to be a little bit less precise and I thought that that would also make it much easier for you as well. So then I mixed this kind of light coral shade or this pink shade to be these like wispy clouds on top of the background that we just made. So as you can see I uh, mixed this really beautiful beautiful pink shade and I mainly added that on top of the kind of middle and top area of the painting and as you can see they're just these wispy clouds they're nothing very exciting or perfectly made they're just these fun little lines basically and then I mixed some more red and yellow to the same color to make more of them in the bottom as well. And if at this point your painting still looks a little bit weird, don't worry, it will come together in the end. This is a very rough base layer for your whole painting and you will add a lot more on the top, so don't worry about that yet. Then I'm going to be mixing a really beautiful pink color together with some red, magenta and yellow. The color that I actually mixed there previously is going to be a darker shade that I'm going to be adding on a little bit later but I actually mixed this color without filming it. So yeah I just mixed in some white, red, magenta and yellow to create this really beautiful vibrant pink color for pretty much all of the clouds in this painting. So I just started kind of stippling it onto the painting. As you can see I'm just making these random little cloud shapes everywhere. Again I'm not really looking at the reference photo at all anymore at this point besides from maybe looking at the colors a little bit so I don't make it completely unrealistic. But yeah, I'm just kind of doing whatever my brush feels like doing. I'm just making these fun little shapes of the clouds here. Just making some bigger, thicker clouds and making some more wispy clouds in the middle as well. Here I'm using this flat rounded brush that is great for any details like this. I think that you can create some beautiful rounded details with this brush, but you can also create pretty thin lines as well. And um, with this kind of clouds, I would say that try to make the edges a little bit rough and imperfect. If you only make these perfectly symmetrical and rounded edges to your clouds it might look a little bit unrealistic but if you're going for that kind of look that could totally work. 
As you can see, I'm now using the darker color that I mixed before. Uh, for this, I mixed some blue, some magenta, and some black and white to create this kind of um, grayish purple color that looks really nice. And I just added that on top of some of the clouds that I just added. So we're going to be having a lot of different colors in our clouds, like you can probably see if you look at a sunset sky, they are never one solid color. They have a lot of color variation. So in this painting, the bottom of each cloud is much more warm and lighter toned and then the top is much darker. You can think of it like this. The sun is setting so the sun is um, below this area of the painting and of course the sun rays from that last sunset, they're going to be projecting up. So of course the bottom part of the clouds is going to be much lighter in tone and the top part will be more in the shadow. Here at this point, I'm not making the top part that dark yet and I would highly recommend you to only make it a little bit darker because you don't want it to be too contrasty and too dark from the get-go so you can just build the colors on later. Then I took this random angled flat brush because it was pretty much one that you know was dry and unused at this point so I just took it and started adding those kind of more soft and wispy clouds in the kind of in between the ones that I already did I just felt like this brush that I was using to create some other details just was kind of making some of those more um, perfectly rounded edges to my clouds so I just wanted to try that out to make some of the more random little clouds in between it didn't work exactly how I would have liked so I just switched back to the other one. But yeah, that's how I created those little clouds in between there. One thing that is also very important is blending. And um, by blending, I don't mean perfectly blending. I just mean blending a little bit. So as you can see here, I use a damp brush using the same brush as I was using with, you know, just applying the color on. And I was just using this damp brush to kind of like pressing this brush on top of the clouds to make them look a little bit softer so that there isn't any harsh lines. And yeah, it's pretty simple thing. You don't, again, have to make a perfect gradient and perfect blend. Just blend those colors together a little bit so it doesn't look like you just place the color down. Then I was adding some burnt sienna and black together with a little bit of white because it started turning a little bit too dark and I started adding this color to the darker parts of the cloud just kind of randomly adding it somewhere. So I didn't want to coat the whole cloud with this darker color. I just wanted to add a couple of darker spots and then blend them together to the other parts of the cloud just so that it would look a little bit more three-dimensional and realistic instead of kind of flat. I was also adding again some more of those wispy clouds in between the bigger ones but I actually think that at this point I should have stopped and just did the other parts and adding some more color to the clouds instead of adding more of them. I was looking at my reference photo a little bit and I noticed that it had a lot of those little teeny tiny clouds in between the bigger ones so I was like yeah I want to add more of them but I felt like in the end I actually ended up adding a little bit too many of them but again I think that's just my own opinion and someone else could love of that look. So here I'm blending that darker color again a little bit not a perfect blend but just kind of blending it a little bit so it doesn't look like there's super harsh edges and I don't know it just looks more organic and natural that way like clouds look like anyway. Then I was mixing some red some yellow and some white together again to make this very light orangey yellow color for the bottom of the clouds. So I loved the warmth in this painting but I felt like I wanted to take it to the next level even more so I just made this color and I started adding it on the bottom of each cloud to accentuate the light even more.
I also love the color so much that I ended up actually covering some of the original background wispy clothes that I made there with that pink color with that orange yellow that I just mixed. So just kind of adding that orange yellow to the background I think made this whole painting pop a little bit more. So I really like that little look there and I'm very happy that I ended up adding it. I just love the illusion of light in paintings and just adding that like super light yellow pop of color to some parts that might need it and I definitely think that in this painting it took this painting to the next level. As you can see, I lost some footage here and uh, honestly, you didn't miss that much anyway. I was actually just making some of those darker little clouds in between the ones that I already did. So as you can see, it's just a little bit more filled with clouds. And again, I think that I could have just left this painting as it is before I did that. But you know, sometimes you do something that seems like a great idea and you're like, well, I could have lived without that, but I think that it looks really pretty anyway, so I don't really mind it. It's just something that you can think about because of course you don't have to do things in the completely same way as I did. But at this point I'm starting to kind of be ready with the clouds. I'm just adding some more of like pink shades and yellow shades in the clouds to just bring in some more color. You know I just go with the vibes. I just add some more color where I feel like it might fit but there is really no rules for this either. You can do it however you want. Again I try to go from light to dark from the bottom to the top. I tried to keep that in mind but I just added some kind of middle shades in between some of those colors to make them blend a little bit more together. The other thing that I always try to keep in mind of course like I have said previously is whatever color I added to the paper I tried to blend it with the surrounding colors a little bit so it would not look like it's out of place. This is my favorite part of the whole painting process. I just took some white gouache and made a little crescent moon on the top of the painting. I feel like it sometimes just elevates the painting so nicely and just kind of perfects everything that you have previously done. And I'm really happy that my brush was also very sharp and small enough for this kind of work. So it actually went perfectly on the first try. So what was left after that was just some minor tweaking with the colors. I felt like especially some of those orangey yellow highlights at the bottom of the clouds were a little bit less blended than some other areas. So I just went through them with my damp brush and just blended them to the other colors a little bit more. But I actually really like how this painting turned out. I always love painting clouds and this time was no exception. The last thing with this painting was to take off my tapes. The tape peel did not reveal perfectly um, sharp edges and I mean I guess it did but you know you can see these little paint uh, splotches here that I ended up covering with white gouache and yeah it just worked pretty well and I'm not mad about that. I don't really care how it looks. I just like the painting. <laughs> If you ended up recreating this, I really hope you had a lot of fun and if you were just watching, again, I really hope you enjoyed this kind of relaxing, chill video. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, leave a thumbs up and leave a cloud emoji so I know you watched until the end. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye!